And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, welcome back to the dojo. As always, I'm Ryu, he's Age. We just came off the reaction to ReZero Season 2, Episode 7. Not much really happened, uh, as we mentioned in the reaction, where there wasn't much reacting even. So, uh, we're both not very emotive people, but still, there was even less to react to this time. It's, it was weird. So, we're probably not going to have that much to discuss this week. It's It was kind of, it started out with... You know, major Beatrice details, and then just kind of fell off the table entirely with like 12 minutes of nothing really happening. It was not what I expected based on how this season has started, so... No, you, you really don't have to mark that as an anomaly. It's cool. No. You don't need another po- We're running out of room on the wall, okay? There, there's only so much room on that wall right there. You realize this, right? You, you'll find a way? Okay. That, she's she's out of control at this point. I'm just I'm just letting her do whatever. Uh, I'll just have to buy a new wall for strictly for hanging her giant post-it notes because that's just producer things. I, I don't want to... Ugh. Just... Ugh. Anyway. So, we're probably not going to have a lot to discuss, as I mentioned, but we're still going to talk about what was a big deal in this, which is... Our lovely little Beatrice here. She, uh, she has some, some things apparently she needs to, to get out and, well, it appear, it appears, sorry, that based on what she said here in this entire scene is she can only do what's written for her in that book, apparently. I, I don't think that's entirely true because I'm pretty sure most of it was just her upset and just kind of raging at him. I suppose. But at the same time, it's probably still at least a half-truth. Right, so to some extent, there's something up with the book that has to do with her, and it might lock her out of doing other things. Like, it might lock her out of complete free will. Yeah, the Gospels, as... It hasn't really gone super in-depth with like what the Gospels exactly are, but all we know really is that there's something that people associated with the witch's cult all have and according to Beetle Geist it's not like I don't know if it's necessarily it's like they have future prediction powers or if it's just what but he was mentioning referencing stuff like the things being it happened to be in the gospel to be fact or whatnot or whatnot right I don't remember his exact wording it's been a while yeah, he did mention something about uh, the word of the gospel and certain things. He he alluded to some stuff like that. I, I do remember that, but how it affects her. And she did mention mother. So she's related to somebody that's involved with the witch's cult. So either she's the daughter of one of the witches or something, or one of the sin archbishops. Just she's related to them somehow, or she is related to them in a way that she refers to them as mother. Well, so the, once again, this is we have another case here of Puck, you know, like Puck referring to Amelia as his daughter. Right. It just it's some something to do with the spirits having familial bonds with mortals, from the sounds of it. Right. So she has a tie to them somehow. In that case, like I said. She refers to them as mother so and she wouldn't have a gospel her own gospel to begin with if she didn't have some sort of connection to the witch right and so the other interesting thing with this other than the whole you know Subaru trying to kill himself her talking about this stuff is Elsa just kind of walked into the room casually mm -hmm. so did did Beatrice just open the door or was she able to just break the barrier that she had up and just walk in and she made it look like she was going to do something to her when she was not actually going to. The way I interpret it is the only reason why Subaru couldn't was because Beatrice had her guard up and didn't want him in. But technically speaking, anyone could go into her library. It's just a matter of how much she wants to allow them to and a bit of luck. Uh... So the way I kind of interpret it is at this point, she's more or less just given up and lowered her guard and doesn't really care too much. So Elsa was man managed to get her way in. 
But that said, though, I also do believe, yeah, that Elsa wouldn't have actually done anything to Beatrice anyway. Right. So yeah, that whole that whole part there at the end, after the big or somewhat big lore drop with her, is I lost my train of thought entirely. It's gone. Let's just move on. <laughs> it's gone. It's just gone. It's out there somewhere. It's gone. Um. So we we still don't really know who. Did did we come to any conclusion of who Elsa may be working for? Just to talk um, about something else. But there's been no confirmation one way or the other at the moment. Uh, Are we sus on Roswell for her? It's, Roswell is the one who makes the most sense at the moment based on what we have. Yeah, that, okay, yeah, that, that's that's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> that's what, see, I, I somehow circled back around to it and grabbed it again. Um, just since there, there's, again, not much going on this episode, I just wanted to get a couple other talking points in really quick here. Um... But yeah, she's still somewhat of a mystery. She's obviously very powerful, and I don't know if we've seen the extent of what she can pull off other than she's, you know, a crazy knife person with some serious tough and or regenerative power. She definitely seems to have some sort of either, yeah, innate toughness or magic resistance or something like that going on. Speaking of magic, uh... That was something I don't remember. Tez Beatrice showed off in the past that she could heal people. She was the one who removed the curse from him. During, oh, that's right. Okay, yeah. During the it, village, again, yeah. it's been a while, so I was just trying to confirm that because it's. I, I, I don't even remember the last time I saw her do anything magic wise. Definitely not yeah. this season, other than just, you know, kicking him out of the room. <laughs> yeah, all spirits, by their very nature, are magical as far as I can tell, based on what they've shown. So basically any spirit should have some sort of magical ability. But yeah, as this as the scene did progress, it while sh what she was saying seems to be like, Age mentioned, like half truth, you know, she's being prevented from full free will as far as I can tell. It's still pretty obvious that she does actually care about Subaru somehow. She just doesn't want to fully admit it for reasons. So that that's going to leave a bunch of extra time for more character development for her, as we mentioned before, that, you know, obviously Amelia is the one that needs the most character development this season, and it doesn't seem to be going great so far, because as, as we saw as this episode went on, Subaru just tried to Subaru his way into solving the problem himself, and mention that, oh, at some point in the future, she'll have to do it. It's just like, no, she needs to do it right now, in my opinion, right now. I, I face palm during the reaction when he said that. Literally, I, I didn't have enough face desk. I didn't have enough room to put my face through my desk. Just could, could you let her have some pet character progression, please? Is it so much to ask? Is it too much to ask, you think? No? Wow, she actually agreed with me. Holy crap. Um, but yeah, just... Uh, Amelia needs the character progression, and at some point Beatrice needs some more, obviously, because the more we learn about her, the more important she clearly is going to be to the story, for obvious reasons. Yeah, even... Well, I said this before, but like, even though she hasn't been portrayed in any sort of romantic light or anything like that as of yet, she is still considered to be one of the main girls of the series. Right, and I don't think she has to be portrayed in a main in a in a romantic light to be like important and just like you know important to his life. He doesn't have to have like a romantic connection with her. She just has to kind of you know be there and relevant. Yeah. The one of the main reasons why I clarify that is just because typically main girls are romance options. Plus also this is, once again, this Subaru technically is a harem protagonist. So usually in the case of harem protagonists, most main girls are romance of some right. sort or another. Right. But, you know, it, it doesn't always have to go that way, in my opinion. But uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it will. Maybe it'll be like one of those little sister things. I, I don't know. Uh, as for As for the rest of the episode... Now, other than the Beatrice stuff, it was pretty, pretty whatever. Just we had, you know, this weird discussion with Otto about him being too laid back. I mean, Subaru, as we mentioned before, Subaru's mental state is just on, it's just going down, perpetually going down. Every once in a while, he gets a little shot in the arm and it goes back up. But 
at the end of the day, his mental state is just going to keep fracturing and fracturing until, you know, he completely loses it one of these times and he's just going to, I don't know what they're going to do with that, but he, he's just, by the nature of the show, it's just his, his mind is in constant turmoil based on running through all the different deaths, what he, what he could possibly do next time, you know, what, what could he be possibly done before, all that stuff is just got to be weighing on the guy. So if he doesn't act laid back, he might actually lose his mind. So, you know, <laughs> maybe maybe if he just, you know, it's good for him to take a step back and not worry too much about it, because if he does, then he probably loses his mind faster. It's, it's probably a decent coping mechanism for him to just be as laid back as possible in these situations where he's just like, okay, now I'm in another, you know, this is my next chance. Okay, I just need to take a deep breath and figure this out. And even if yeah. you have Otto like going, hey, what's your problem? You're we're way too laid back. <laughs> what's your problem, man? I, I'm still not speaking of Otto. I, I'm still not sure how I feel about this character. He seems kind of just. I, I'm not. I'm on on the fence of whether he's, you know, important or not. <laughs> he, he hasn't really had a character as of yet. He's just been kind of a person who's around. It definitely seems like they want to make him a character, but he just hasn't really achieved character status yet. He's very much stuck in Mishima territory. Right, he, he's bordering on the edge of possibly becoming a character. We'll, we'll see if uh, he gets any more, but... um, The whole thing with near the end with... Uh, I, I just... I had a friend in need, and... It, just to talk about that for a second before we get down there, it's like... What what was the purpose of like Subaru mishearing that? Like really? I I I just that that was that just felt like another way to extend the episode needlessly because they just they had no way to it was almost like they didn't have enough time to fit into this episode what they wanted to, so the parts of this episode that really dragged just really dragged. <laughs> also a part of that was more or less just kind of showing this like that Subaru never viewed Otto as a friend, or even the, understood the idea that Otto might be trying to become his friend, and not just purely trying to use him for the favors and advantages that Subaru kept offering him. I suppose, but still, it's like, it was just weird to me. I, I don't know. I, I can't really explain it at the moment, since we're just, I'd have to like watch it again and just completely let it sink in. It just, it weirded me out. So going through here, did did the elf chick, didn't she, wasn't she wearing black the first time that we saw her, like, coming into the house and they had the discussion, wasn't she wearing a black cloak, not white, like one of the, I, I could have sworn she was wearing black when she came into the house, and then, like, the first time we saw her, or one of her clones that we've talked about, of the possibility, weren't the clones wearing white? Yes, every time we've seen the quote-unquote clones, they've wore white. Whereas during the meeting, she was wearing, like, black and pink. Similar color scheme to, like, her staff there. Right. And if I recall correctly, the other thing, it seemed like they did some camera angle stuff where it allowed us to see her act her full... the entirety of her face, and we never saw the entirety of the face of the one in black. Because I did make a mental note of that. It's like, okay, why are they going through this, you know, like, 30-degree camera angle to show the entirety of her face. But this this whole discussion of Garfield and her just basically putting the finger on Subaru, like, hey, we, we smell the witch on you. I mean, okay, I guess that's... Yeah. I mean, like, like Subaru said, he wanted all the information he could get, and this is a form of more information him knowing that they know that he has been touched by the witch is reasonable information for him to have, but obviously he did not want to get put in a situation where three days are burned and he doesn't know, you know, if he gets another reset point in the future here. Yeah, he doesn't know when his next reset point is necessarily going to be. The furthest he's gone so far on this reset point is five days, so... But we have seen in the past that he can retroactively get new reset points, like the thing with the the Battle of the Whale. Like, he'd made it past that point prior, 
time wise but yet he still got a new reset point after the whale fight right so, so he really doesn't know he knows he's made it to five days before but he really doesn't <laughs> know for sure what his actual like trigger for getting a new re reset is yeah and that'll be interesting to see if he ever figures that out and can kind of like even like ballpark it like in any way shape or form it's like okay i got like this 12 hour window you know what do hmm yeah, overall, this new life more or less played out exactly the same as the first, except for once again, like I mentioned in the reaction, it seems like the major diverging factor is Garfield slash Ryuzu. Yeah, like, they're... <laughs> they have seemed to do something different basically every time. Whereas everyone else kind of falls into the usual time loop patterns and stuff like that with only minor differences. Those right. two, every single time, have done something drastically different so one could speculate that they either know well they obviously know that he's involved with the witch but i you, i guess you could speculate that they have some sort of idea what his power is and or they're not affected by it and can remember certain things kind of like how they showed off uh rom's like you know vague remembrance of what we believe to be a uh one of the dead timelines so maybe those two, Garfield and Ryuzu, have some sort of, like, more vivid memory of dead timelines or something? I mean, you could speculate that. I'm, I have no idea, really. That is, I'm just I'm just spitballing, throwing stuff at the wall at this point for this. Yeah, I really don't have too many ideas at the moment. It's more or less just something to make note of, is the fact that whether it's by their nature as chaotic individuals or through some sort of power of their own, they seem to be a very divergent force in the timelines. Right. So it's either, like I said, that they're, they could just be chaotic and all over the place and not very... Uh, they can't really be pinned down. They just kind of... They're just all over the place, basically. So it could be that, or like I was spitballing, they could have some timey-wimey nonsense and leave it at that. <laughs> but yeah, this, this whole... This, this whole what, how long was this actually so i mean th this discussion was fairly important like this the scene in the field here that it was fairly important but it did kind of drag they they did some cool shots with some animation of like the sky and some you know some foliage and stuff like that as they were talking that was kind of neat but this whole so this was like okay so we so let's just say you know he gets abducted at about nine minutes in the episode. It's like, hey, we're going to go talk. Yeah, like, this explains why they were so defensive the first in the previous timeline when he uh, talked about taking the trial himself. Uh, this once again further reiterates the whole idea that the more times he dies on a particular reset point, the stronger the witch's curse seems to get because like Garfield makes specific mention of like yeah, of the miasma being significantly stronger on him only after he took the trial which we know is his reset point so he would have had less miasma on him going into the trial than he does now after he's had several resets into the trial room right but yeah so <laughs> just He's still, he, I mean, that whole scene of just him writhing around as like time was passing as the days were going on, it just, it, it was just, it just felt like bad pacing to me. Like I, I would just, it's like, okay, he's still writhing around the cell. You know, that was going on for like a solid minute. It's like, the, I guess, based on how episode eight plays out, all, you know, maybe, it, maybe it'll, sorry, makes sense, but it just, it seemed like they were, trying to find ways to kill time or whereas they could have probably just made the episode like one or two minutes shorter overall it just it just felt bad pacing wise so until auto shows up there we go so auto yeah that was about 10 minutes let's say of just nothing really happening you had the discussion in the field which was you know important information wise for subaru that they could you know smell the cult on him all that stuff but for basically 10 minutes in this episode which is almost half the episode there's not much going on just 
fill in time. And then, you know, we end the episode with the whole friendship, friend in need, and whatever Subaru called it. He, I don't even know if there's anyone, anyone had a name that resembled friend in deed or whatever the heck he called it. <laughs> It's like, it's like he wasn't even trying. I could understand that he's been out of it for a couple days and he might have misheard him or something, but... I mean, as Age mentioned before, like, he, he's never really seen Otto as a friend, more or less just like, okay, we're... We have, like, a business relationship, basically. But... I guess Otto wants to be a character on the show, so he's... He, he's thrown it out there. He's... <laughs> he's given the friendship confession. It's It's over. His face was even bright red while he was doing it, because he, he didn't know if he could potentially handle being an actual character on the show. <laughs> yeah, there he is. But, I don't know, I, I'm still on the fence about Otto. He he could have good character progression, you know, you, you never know. You have I, I've seen characters on other shows that just kind of, like, show up kind of like him and then become fairly decent support characters for a show, depending on how long the show runs. So, we'll see. He seems like an okay guy, but... Once again, not, not much really happened, so we're just gonna have to leave it to uh to the next episode. The the laughing thing, you know, that was that was good. He he had to get a good laugh out. Maybe that's another coping mechanism for him losing his mind. <laughs> yeah, we've only actually seen the outro like twice. So there and there hasn't been any differences to it so far. Yeah, I was just thinking about you know, if they, if they, because I have seen on occasion where certain shows change the intro up a little bit based on how things are going in the show or what just kind of like teasing what could happen and then in the outro, like doing the same thing. Yeah, like the whole thing with when we watched the freaking like Adult Swim version, they cut a lot of it, but like the whole thing with like JoJo's part four where they're supposed to be like adding the new characters in and stuff like that to the intros and outros. Right. Well, let's not even get on the whole Adult Swim and how much Turner Broadcasting cuts out of that shit. It's oh, that's 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 an, that's its own video, honestly, that we're gonna get to at some point. But to to wrap things up, a ROM appearance is not complete without getting in one solid burn, <laughs> <laughs> and she got another one in right as the episode wrapped up, right on cue. Is I guess these days an episode is not complete without a ROM burn. You just remember, even when she's an old hag, she'd still be cute. <laughs> so with that, I think we got nothing else. Like like we mentioned coming into this, not much happened. So there's not really a lot to talk about. We could we could drag on about some stuff, but I don't think there's any point in that. So I just. I'm kind of hoping this is just a kind of like a filler episode that they just had to fill time with and ne the next episode will explain some more stuff and I'm looking forward to it still obviously but like I said the pacing just seemed kind of off for those like whole 10 minutes of the damn episode yeah we this based on that reaction we knew going into this it was going to be a pretty short discussion mm -hmm. which is fine I mean sometimes there's just not a lot to talk about and it's you know, we, we've managed to drag, uh, you know, 40, 40 minutes out of stuff a couple of times, but this time I just, I got nothing else. I honestly got nothing. <laughs> There's just nothing. We we could talk about Garfield's hand getting bigger and speculate on his transformation, but I, I get the feeling he's at least going to be like 40, 50% of what uh, Frederica's transformation is. Something something similar, so... He's just probably the only thing that's gonna be really different. He's probably gonna be more monstrous looking because he's more. He's got more because uh, he's half and not quarter or whatever they were mentioning. Yeah, he's a he's a half blood, whereas she's only quarter blood. So yeah, and I think I'd rather leave the half blood versus quarter blood debate for another time because it. I just I want to keep this short and sweet. Every once in a while, maybe we just need a short and sweet episode to. A hard reset on stuff because this is the only thing we're recording this week because uh once again uh half the country is like in a slate of ice and hopefully everybody that's affected by that is doing okay and you know rooster yeah, teeth is on hiatus and i know a lot of places that you know do animation and stuff like that are based in texas so hopefully everybody's doing okay and hopefully everybody gives them a break for you know having to take a couple weeks off because you know they they got to take care of themselves first and it 
you know, maybe they're not even capable of uploading or doing what they usually do because of, you know, massive weather shenanigans. So let's let's give those people a break, huh? <laughs> they, they've got some serious problems they need to deal with before, you know, uploading entertainment related stuff. So hopefully that uh, fixes itself up in the next week here and they get some uh, warmer weather, which is drastically needed for certain places. But it is still February, so anyway. If you're living in those regions, I hope you're staying warm and and taking good care of yourself as much as you can, and hope for, hopefully the situation gets better. But as for ReZero, I think we're done. And, you know, Age is slowly falling off the screen up there. He's, you know, just kind of looks like that uh, the logo from, like, uh, You Don't Know Jack from, like, the early 2000s. It's just, like, the top part of his head is just he's slowly descending into the realms of madness up there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I've been here the whole time. Remember, this is a short discussion. Yes, this is a short discussion. You got in character. I can't, I can't sink down that far. This is as low as my chair gets. I could be down here looking like a moron the whole time. At least you look kind of cool up there. I can't do that. It, why, why are you not? You're not helping with. She's not going to help me with this. She's not going to. I can't. I can't get a shorter chair right now. It's, it's unacceptable. Apparently, it's, it's too much to ask to, to get a shorter chair. Why don't I just raise the camera? <sighs> touche. Touche, producer, touche. Well, I could raise the camera. As we all know, that would take effort. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, however you're watching, we appreciate it as always. Like, subscribe, follow, whatever, if you enjoy our content. We appreciate it as always. And thanks for hanging out with us here in the dojo for another anime night. And we'll be back next week with more Ruby as usual and more... ReZero, and hopefully we get something more to talk about. Hopefully a, a more full episode, not a, like a, a 50 percenter at best that this one was. Well, we mentioned before, this was, there was some still serious story progression for Beatrice, just not much. So, have a good morning, evening, and afternoon, whatever it is for you as you watch. And we'll be back next week with more ReZero. So, have a good one.